this will be part five reminder video on how to do the eye of partridge heel in toe up so on my previous reminder video i stopped right where i am now i'm about to start my decreases i've already done one stable round of knitting one decrease round which you can see that knit two together right there and then on top is one plain knit round and now this row here on the needles is my decrease round so this will be decrease round number two and as i said i'm starting right where i left off in the previous video i didn't move anything This is probably boring for anyone else to watch, but for me, I like real time knitting instruction. So apologies if anyone is watching and you find this to be drawn out and dull. Okay, decrease on this side, the slip, slip knit in the front, slip both as if to knit, and push in from the front with the left needle, and then knit. Hopefully, yay, did not split the yarn. And then keep on going around. Since I went ahead and did my two decreases, I'm going to go ahead and just keep on knitting once I get down here to my little butter beer beginning of the round stitch marker. And maybe 
maybe to not make too many reminder videos because this is repetitive. I'll do a couple of rows on this reminder video for the decreases and then just continue. I know I said I don't like kind of like the cutscene videos, but it's going to take a while for me to get down to 64 stitches and that would take a couple of videos. It's easy. All you're doing is one decrease round, one knit round, and repeat until you get down to 64 stitches or whatever your stitch count is supposed to be in your pattern. Continue to knit on this side. We're basically in a rinse repeat cycle with this repeat of decrease knit rounds. So once you do the first two or three rounds and get some, get two or three decreases in, it's just repetitive. Won't need a, another reminder video to continue. I'll just come back and once I get everything down to 64 stitches and show how to join everything and put it all back onto uh, the magic loop that I have. That way I can knit both socks at the same time and finish them up. Okay, I've knitted all the way around. I'm coming back up to my stitch marker, which means I'm going to want to start decreases again. And I'm going to knit two together. And continue knitting across the top of the foot. Do another slip slip through the front. Knit the first one and then slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit, and then 
push through the front and knit those two together and keep going. And then just knit right back to the beginning of the round. Quick suggestion that popped in my head. If you've never used five needles at once for a heel flap and gusset, and you've never used metal needles specifically, um, the, the metal needles allow the stitches to slide very, very quickly with the yarn, there's no stick, there's no grip or anything. Everything just slides very nicely. So if you're afraid of needles sliding out, that's why I keep moving things around, um, then you can try wooden needles or bamboo needles. That way the yarn has something to grip and hold on to and you don't lose your stitches. That was the first thing I learned about needles when I started knitting. Gosh, maybe five, six years ago, I think it was. So I did my decrease. You can see it right there. So I'm going to continue with my knit round and just make one big plain knit round all the way around these needles. But yeah, um, for beginners, especially when you're using multiple needles at once, having wooden needles, if you're not accustomed to the slick metal, and how the yarn acts on the needles, you can definitely grab wooden or bamboo needles. And I was always getting, when I first started knitting, um, the Clover brand. They're easily accessible to anyone. You can find them at Michael's or Joann's, Hobby Lobby, AC Moore, any craft store that has knitting supplies and crochet supplies. Because I was extremely frustrated trying to knit with metal needles and the stitches were just everywhere or they would slide off the needles. And someone suggested that beginners should use it's best if beginners use wooden or bamboo needles. And the clover ones are cheap, less than $5 for a pack of five needles. Double point if I remember correctly. And then they can get really expensive, uh, like the leaky or lyke. I think they're actually made of driftwood, some kind of wood. But that's just like any needle. Some metal needles are perfectly affordable. High highs are very affordable. They're not more than probably at most for a set of five needles, I think maybe 12 or $13. It does go into the hundreds when you get the full set of multiple sizes all in one pack or interchangeables. Those can go into the hundreds. 
Uh, Chai Gu is another affordable brand of knitting needles. C H I A G O O for Chai Gu. And the Haya Haya is, I believe, H I Y A. Spelled out twice Haya Haya needles. And those can be found in crafting stores. Well, actually, the Haya Hayas and the Chai Gu's. I haven't seen in the crafting stores. I'll correct myself. See them in your local yarn stores. Definitely on Amazon. But those uh, leaky or leaky. Okay, whoops. I need to do my decrease because I was going around knitting. And to make sure that I don't get lost. Come on, zoom in. Doesn't want to focus correctly. You can see, which I wish it would focus. Uh, you can see down here on the row below is the decrease. So I've just done the knit, so I need to make sure I do my decrease here. This is all about reading stitches. Because I'm not using a, uh, a row counter to tell me which row I'm on. Be it row one, which would be a decrease round, row two would be the knit round. going to do something that's probably frowned upon, but I'm going to make sure that these lenses are clean. Give me one second. There we go. Yeah, much better. And the bouncing of the arm holding my phone, which I don't like. Yeah, you can see it a little bit more clear if I zoom in. So that was a decrease right there. And let me get over to the other side and do another decrease. Um, but what I was saying about the leaky or lyke, however they're pronounced, those are expensive. Very expensive just for wooden needles. If I recall, when I did see them in a yarn store, they were well over $40 for a pack of needles. So, I certainly don't need those. But I'm not a fan of using wooden or bamboo needles any longer. It slows me down because the yarn is gripping onto the needle. And I want more speed. Even though I'm not a fast knitter, I want at least a little bit more speed and less resistance when I'm knitting. And even the metal needles, some can get outrageously expensive. I must say, I. I Wanted to know why everyone was raving about a brand called Signature Needles. So I got one nine inch circular. And that was $42 for one nine inch circular, which is honestly, my opinion, ridiculous. It's not like it's gonna knit for you and then you can run off and go do something else. There was nothing special about the nine inch circulars. And the join in it, where the cable and the needle join together, it grabs my yarn. It's not smooth at all. So for me personally, I wasted $42 on a gimmick. 
I know a lot of people swear up and down about those needles, but they're no different than a chai goo or a haya haya, or even a nitpicks needle or any of the others. It's always personal preference. Me, I like to stick to chai goo, haya haya, and even the Addy Rockets. Um, the Addies are very nice, extremely affordable, just like the Haiga, the uh, Haya Hayas and the Chai, chai Goos. Very affordable. I have no idea why I'm rambling about knitting needles, but I am. I think I'm going to make this reminder video short when it comes to this knitting. And I'll go ahead and finish up all of my decreases until I get to 64 stitches. And this is a regular round because I just did a decrease. that way. I don't get terribly bored when I watch myself do this. I can just kind of fast forward to the next one because this is basically rinse and repeat as I said previously. I always find it kind of relaxing knitting and watching a podcast and it's just quiet knitting. Maybe there's background noise like TVs or music like I have going on right now. And you're just knitting with someone. Moving into some decreases down here at the beginning of my round. Knit two together. and continue.
knit one slip slip knit on this side things really do stab. I did the slip slip knit on this side. Yep, it's right there. Up on that needle. Right up on it so I can go ahead and do one plain knit round. That shows how tired I am if I have to remind myself that quickly which round I'm on.
second. I'll go ahead and stop this reminder video and then come back when I have everything reduced down to 64 stitches. I'll continue with my decrease round and my knit rounds and then I'll show how I get it all back on magic loop. So I'm stopping right here where I need to make some more decreases. And you can see I went from originally, one row was uh, at 19 stitches, so I reduced it automatically down to 17 to match the other side, but I've decreased down to currently two, four, six, eight, one, down to 12 stitches. And it would be the same on this side. Two, four, six, eight. Oops. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve across this side. So they match. Um, I'll need to pull this down to, off the top of my head, if I recall correctly, eight stitches on each side no less than six uh, to get this all down to 64 stitches total all the way around um, so yeah i'll go ahead and stop here and come back to show how i get this bad boy onto my magic loop and then i'll continue up towards the cuff and probably just end up doing a two by two ribbing nothing special nothing fancy um, but right now and then bind off obviously but right now you can see it's definitely a little mini sock you can see the heel the pocket inside and if I puff this out you can really see it so it's definitely Definitely a sock forming. Okay.